Nathan Judah. I'm here with Wolves supporter Mr. Liam Keane for the, the last time in pre season, Liam. Correct. Tears, tears. It's gone quick, hasn't it? It has gone quick. Forense won, well, most of it's gone quick. <laughs> Forense won, Wolves won. What did you make of it? Yeah, it was an interesting game because obviously Wolves played a much younger side, didn't they? Uh, we only had Wang, Bolly, Cody as really the. Uh, the senior players, Kundal to an extent, I yeah, suppose, is yeah, more yeah. senior than some of the others. But still, a, other than that, a younger it, line. Yeah, a very, a very young side uh, to get some opportunities against a forensic side, which I, I think neither of us knew too much about. But speaking to, oh, a, speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm inside out. Speaking to a few people, I, I, apparently they're sort of one of the favourites for promotion to the top tier mm. this season. They've got quite a few players. They've recruited well, quite a few players who are sort of top tier Portugal standards. So yeah. they've got a good side, basically. I thought they looked um, pretty nice, there, actually. Yeah, 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 they, they look decent. And of course, Wolves made the a great start, giving away a free kick and. Uh, I think you know Bolly getting a mix-up, Cody giving away the free kick, getting booked. They scored yeah. that. Uh, Wolves settled after that, I found, and, and did okay. Second half they were much better. They mm. got more control, got on the ball more. Um, overall, it wasn't the most exciting game <laughs> that you, you, you could see, but it was a good run out for a lot of the younger players. Of course, there wasn't any of the senior lads on the bench. And for me, I know you're going to mention him. Mm. Conor Ronan was oh, probably yeah. the standout. Well, I'll, I'll let you. I'll yeah, let you yeah, of course. There. What I was going to say is sometimes uh, the flow is not quite there, but yeah. when but when you've got your let's say your main 11 let's say for from yesterday to play you've got to just give people game time don't you so you know in the best in the best possible way uh, Totti Gomez isn't left back and Mosquera's not right you know they're probably going to be more central so you've just got to give people and it was almost like square pegs and round holes at times isn't it but they got minutes under it and that showed but like you said they grew into the game a little bit more and you mentioned there Conor Owen was probably the standout yeah him and maybe Chem Campbell you know he set the goal up uh, well won the penalty rather that, that mm. set the goal up for Huang uh, I thought he did really well but yeah uh, Ronan I felt his range of passing yeah. is really nice a lot of very accurate crossfield balls he's energetic in midfield he wins the ball back well which I think a lot of people don't expect they think of him as a creator mm. he added a lot of numbers, goals and assists to his game at St Mirren last year, but he, he wins the ball back, he's a batter in midfield as well, uh, very tidy on the ball, so I, I thought he stood out and I thought he looked a, a good option, dare I say, for, for potentially oh. staying with the club. Um, I will tease mm. the listeners or, or the, the viewers to say that we did interview him at the end of the game and we will have something ASAP on that. Um, spoke really well, a really lovely uh, lad as well. and. Um, I thought he did really well. I thought, he, thought he's um, he's had opportunities this this yeah. uh, this preseason. Maybe not as many as he would have liked. Maybe a yeah. few more minutes against Besiktas, Alaves, exam uh, sure. for example. Maybe coming on at Sporting. But overall, I thought he's done did really well, and, and he was probably the standout today for me. Someone else who we haven't seen too much of this preseason because he's been injured is Huang. Yes, got a decent amount of time in, under his belt today. Look, I mean, out of all the players, you see Raúl's injured, and you know, obviously they're desperate for a striker. Huang can play central. Um, what do we think? Do we think that he's going to be pushing to be in that starting lineup, or more likely being on the bench for that first game against Leeds United? I mean, if you to hold a gun to my head, I think he probably doesn't start against Leeds. But he's, he's definitely one of the players that has to push. You know, he was bought in for, for 12 million pounds. He had a good start to, to his, uh, his first season, and of course injuries, and he tailed off after that. Um, so he's a, a fully fledged first team player, and he has to be pushing to play. Um, do, you, do you think? Do you think the criticism is fair or, yeah, or a bit yeah. harsh at times? Or? Uh, I mean, of course, there's always going to be people online who are harsh for, for harsh's sake. But um, I think most of the criticism is fairly is fairly accurate and fair because he was quite poor for mm. particularly that last third of the season. Mm. Um, Did you see enough today though in his in his runs, in his passing, in his shooting that that maybe he you know he can be provide an important asset to Wolves this season? Yeah, we have to remember he's just come back from a sort of uncomfortable injury in his hip, a small uh, muscle in his hip that's been causing a bit of grief. So you've got to put you know, into context that he's just coming back from an injury. It's his first start in pre-season today, his first minutes in pre-season were yesterday mm. against Sporting. So he is behind everyone else. Mm. But I saw enough. I thought he made a few good runs. Uh, uh, there, there's <laughs> The big criticism with him is probably the touch and, and mm. passing. And, and a few times he he let himself down and his, and his teammates. But overall, he was, he's energetic. He led the line fairly well. He held the ball. I thought he did okay. Um, he has to be pushing on uh, more this season and showing what he did in the first half of last year. But equally, he's not a, you know, a central striker for me. He is better off the left. And I think once the season settles in, Raul comes back in, a striker mm. comes in, we might see the best of mm. Wang, but maybe not early on in the season. Connor Cody and Willie Bolly are back today. Of course, you had Nathan Collins yesterday with Max Kilman. On top of that, you've got, you've got your wider guys who are central in, you know, in Gomez and Mosquera. So that's six, really, mm. centre-backs. Now, if everybody's fit or if everybody's ready to go from, from you know, the start of the season, Leeds United, can you see one of these players potentially with a move away or a loan away? Or do you think that, that Bruno will want to pick that? I know it's thin on the ground at this moment in time, so you know, every time you talk about someone going away. But 
Can you see one of those players potentially leaving this club, or do you think he wants to get everybody available that he's got? I think he'll be desperately wanting to keep the senior players that are available. I, I don't, at this point, don't count Mosquera and Gomez really as proper senior players, I think, until they get a few more games into their belt. I think he'll be desperate to keep Bolly and, um, and, and Cody, certainly, for obvious reasons. Um, the other two, if they're going to play a four, I can see one of them for certain, and most likely Mosquera, if I'm, if I'm to speculate, going on loan. Um, because if you're going to play a, a four with two centre-backs, you're going to have six centre-backs sitting there. We're being waved at by Alex Dickon, by the way. He's off. See you later, Alex. Uh, <laughs> he's going to try uh, some clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding, Alex. Oh, no, he's listening. Really. He's listening. I love you, really. Uh, see you later, mate. Um, yeah, I think one of them has to go. I think one of them has to go on low for me. Um, the only thing that would hold him back is you're waiting on Semedo to come back. I think he's meant to be back in sort of full training next week. Be waiting for him to come back. Mm. Do you keep Scare as a backup right back at least maybe till the end of August? Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a it's not really the position we always want to be in, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, but that's probably the only reason you would keep holding him for now. And, uh, and it's not a slight against him, I think, just with the opportunities he's going to have, he's probably better suited to get into minutes elsewhere. Yeah, of course. Um, look, sum it up. Um, Farrow and, and, and the dorm for 10 days and just three seasons as a whole. Like I said, this is the last time before we talk about previewing Leeds United. Yeah. How do you feel it's all gone? I think it's gone pretty well. I think it's gone as well as it, as it could have done because mm. it, there's obvious glaring mm. issues that the squad needs additions, it needs depth, and, and, and yeah, we've said that a million times. But with a change of formation, a change in system, integrating so, so, uh, some of the players like uh, bringing uh, Gibbs Whiting, for example, obviously a new signing in Nathan Collins so quickly into the, the pre-season uh, in Spain as well, I think they've settled in nicely. They're showing some good signs in the formation. Um, and I think it's got real potential to, to, to work, to do really well for them. Um, but there's some really big decisions bruno has got to make, particularly with centre-back, as we know. Um, it's, it's, it's a tough one. I'm really intrigued as to what the starting lineup will be against Leeds. And right now, my prediction is it, it's going to be what we saw against um, against Sporting. I think that's, that's most likely to happen. And from a transfer point of view, they've got to they've got to sign some players, don't they? They've got, they've got yeah. to get at least two in. You'd have thought, don't you? Minimum two. Did, I'm not saying before Leeds, but obviously before deadline, yeah. you need to get two at least two bodies on the line. Yeah. A forward and a midfield for me are the glaring options. I, I totally agree. Um, potentially a wing back could be so. An addition to that depends how quickly um, Smeda comes back. But even when he does, you've only got three. Yeah. Across two positions um, <coughs> with, with players and having to fill and that's in. keeping Gibbs White and Neves, obviously. Uh, exactly, exactly. Um, Wolves are going to use the full window. That's the way they work. They're going to use the full window to bring players in. They're not panicking. Yeah. Um, but they have to bring in uh, a striker is the obvious one with Raul injured, and for me, as you say, another midfielder. I think just to supplement the quality they've already got there. Incredibly, our next two shots going to be post Leeds United. It's come round quick. Three points. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. For Wednesday 1, Wolves 1, for all the post-match reaction, make sure you log on to expressthestar.com.